So I'm sure you will all recall how this uh, force the vote split. As they like to say, they like to use the word split to the left. I don't like to use that word. I like to to call it out for what it really is, which is the great unmasking. Right. During these past couple of weeks, we've really seen where people stand um, uh, on not just on this issue, but. As a whole, in regards to criticizing politicians, holding them to their campaign promises, uh, holding elites accountable, right? U.S. Congress people are not children. Uh, these people are some of the most powerful elites on the face of the planet, right? Let, let's, not, uh, let's not idolize them, and let's definitely not downplay the power they have either, right? Because you, you, they like to say, oh, well, why are you criticizing them? It's not like they have magical powers. Oh, well, it's not like they're, they're nothing either, right? You'll give me that at least, won't you? So this issue forced the vote, forcing a vote on Medicare for all, forcing a vote on the House floor has been a big issue. And you've had not just politicians, but also, uh, you know, their media poodles coming out to defend them. Yes. And, and, and we saw these relentless attacks against Jimmy Dore specifically, right? Very, very vicious uh, personal attacks that have nothing to do with healthcare. I mean, you had uh, just the most random crap being brought up. Unbelievable. Uh, and it backfired on a lot of them as we looked at, right? Specifically, people from the Young Turks, Majority Report. I mean, they just made themselves look uh, uh, horrible, really. So, and even people going after me, right? Like, oh, you're, you're, not, you're not American. How dare you speak about this? Oh, really, that's rich coming from Americans. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but you know, let's just ban foreign journalists. Fine, go. <laughs> no more foreign journalists. <laughs> so we, we, we had AOC even talk about this, right? And, and what did she say? I'm going to read you her tweet. This is from December 16th. She said um, that, you know, the problem with having a GOP Senate is that people can still disingenuously vote because they know it's going to a graveyard, right? And regarding to the co-sponsor list, right? Um, do you remember Kamala Harris, for example, co-sponsoring Medicare for all? And then she flip-flopped uh, so many times that even the Young Turks had to admit, like, something's up here. Um, so AOC, you know, she's correctly pointing out here that a co-sponsor list is not something genuine because even it, when you force a vote, and even if it fails, it adds clarity because it puts people on the record. But then she still tries to, you know, say that, oh, but we can't do it because, you know, we have a GOP Senate. Oh, we can't do anything. Oh, well, that doesn't counter what you just said here. Nonetheless, she, she was doing this. And then she also said that, you know, this was violence when people were calling her out, right? Look, look what she said. Because she was, she was trying to tout her pay-go exemption as something of, of a feat, right, that she accomplished. And then she's saying, and to be 100% honest, it was hard during, uh, during this to be targeted and marred as some sellout enemy of the people over a late tactical disagreement over one floor vote. Also a bummer to see figures excuse comments like fuck her and fuck anyone who protects her. That's not tone. That's violence. So, you know, she, she, she's pretty clear on where she stands, right? She's not going to budge. Neither on this floor vote, right? And neither with, with holding Nancy Pelosi accountable for anything. And the media poodles, they, of course, like Ryan Grimm. Here's an example of Ryan Grimm. Look what he was saying. Oh, when you look back at the history of left movements, you constant, constantly see them splitting over obs obscure differences. <laughs> no, no, no. These are not obscure differences. This is a very simple concept. It's not even a, a strictly a left thing. It's just holding politicians to their word, which is, you know, in of itself a feat, since politicians are, I think, universally viewed as some of the most dishonest people on the face of the planet. <laughs> right? So th this is not even a left thing. It's just... People voted for something. They want, act, they want, you know, results. They want action. They want substantive change. And they want health care because they're dying. It's not just, oh, we, we'd like this. No, no, they need this. Do you understand? And, and this is, again, part of the problem with the rhetoric because they, they seem to talk about it like it's, like it's, you know, something nice to have. No, it, it's health care. And you're also in the middle of a pandemic. And there are millions of people dying. Yeah, it, it's a matter of urgency. Do you understand? Wait for the kicker. Wait for... I know you know all of this. We're doing a recap because... <laughs> wait for the kicker. I'm just reminding you. 
And we, we had the majority report making fun of Jimmy Dore. Look at this, right? Look at how they, they were making fun of him. Wasn't shut such a total moron. I would think that he was like nefarious, but he's just a moron idiot. And maybe, maybe a little bit juiced up. I don't know. Yeah, okay, we've heard, we've heard enough. We've heard enough. Now get ready. Get ready. Are you ready? I, I was just giving you a brief recap. This is AOC today. Today, just a few hours ago. Someone is asking her about uh, the House voting rules, right? AOC can do a thread, on, uh, a thread on how House voting works and explain why the 15-minute timer means nothing. Okay, and then she, see, she says, feel free to add any other questions. And someone asks her, what is the purpose of a vote like the one tonight where the answer is already known regardless of the result of the vote? Is it mainly just to get representatives on the record? And look what AOC says. A few reasons. Sometimes it's to get members on the record so people can't make excuses later. Sometimes these votes create real political pressure that forces developments. Sometimes we vote for the historical record to let future generations know we did everything we could. <laughs> uh, amazing. <laughs> uh, the penny dropped. That, that's forced the vote in a nutshell. She sees the light. All of a sudden, AOC sees the light. She's finally come around. Yes? She just made the case for forced to vote. Oh, you thought she was stupid or something? It's kind of mean. A AOC is, I mean, I'm not saying this as a joke. She she's probably one of the most intelligent people in the entire U.S. Congress. I mean that. I really genuinely mean that. She knows exactly what the, she's doing. She knows exactly. And I don't say this because of this tweet right here. I say this because this entire forced to vote strategy wasn't just being pushed by her by her, you know, by the uh, DSA. She was saying this when she was running in 2018. She was saying this before she was even elected. Look, I'll show you. Here, this is a promo video from Justice Democrats. Here we go. wins in my opinion, since 20 a lot of people in the democratic caucus when we are courageous enough to just puncture the silence on an issue they will start to move don't people realize that the most powerful position you can be in is when you are not materially attached to a position of power if you're a one-term congress member so what you can make 10 years worth of change in one term if you're not afraid. People are saying, you know. Yes, 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 a hundred times yes. That is exactly what we're talking about. I'm sorry, I don't have the picture right here. I haven't pulled it up, but there's a picture of her. Uh, you remember with all the activists in front of Pelosi's office? That's the AOC we're talking about. This is the AOC we're talking about, right? That's what we're talking about. That's the energy that we want. That's the AOC that we want. Here's AOC. Got another one for you. Here's AOC with Glenn Greenwald. Also, before she got elected, listen to what Glenn asks her. Pay attention to what Glenn asks her. Oh, I love Glenn. <laughs> By the way, this is like, f uh, curiously enough, this is like the most HD, you know, fork. I don't know what resolution this is. The most high quality interview I've ever seen. The video is, is frankly amazing. L listen to what Glenn asks AOC, okay? You're going to love this. We just have a little bit of time left. Um, let me just ask you a couple of what I hope are quick questions. Um, your opponent, Congressman Crowley, has been pretty upfront about his hopes to replace Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer in the Democratic top wing of the Democratic leadership once they retire or maybe even before that. Um, for as long as I can remember, the Democratic Party in the House has been led by Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer. So if you are elected, um, will you agitate for different leaders 
leading the Democratic Party in the House caucus, or do you think that um, Pelosi and Hoyer should continue to be in those leadership positions? No, I think that we need new leadership. I think the idea that we should have the same leadership for more than one generation is probably a mistake in American politics in general. Um, you know, when I think about my opponent trying to... Ah. <laughs> You, you can't make this up, right? Did, did, I, did I put words in her mouth or did you not just hear her say that? You, you heard it. This is June 12th, 2018. Right? June 12th, 2018. You heard her say that. Having this... I think the idea that we should have the same leadership for more than one generation is probably a mistake in Ameri American politics in general. Definitely watch this in, uh, interview. It's a good one. So, going back to, to her tweet, she knows how to play politics, man, and she, un she understands what this strategy is and what this means. Okay, and again, I want to give a shout out also, you know, to, because uh, you had a lot of people that actually went out and, and, went to force the vote. They went to D.C., right? I saw uh, Pasta, Fiorella, uh, from Combo Couch, uh, Brianna, I saw uh, Jackson, I saw a bunch of people. I think I managed to pull one of the pictures over here, right? This is great. This is what I'm talking about. This is the energy that we need, right? Direct action. This is what I've been telling you guys about the entire time and it's, it's again it's not some ideal this is you know part of your history part of the history of the working class in general not just in the u.s right so <clears throat> excuse me and here you know here's a reply to what aoc said on twitter so then why not force a vote on medicare for all and put pressure on the representatives who are against it wouldn't that show that you really did everything you could exactly exactly and you know, when AOC says that, oh, this is to show future generations that we did everything we could. Well, I'm here to tell future generations and current ones too, that no, they're not doing everything that they can. They're not. They're not. They're not even doing the bare minimum. They're not even doing the bare minimum. This is nonsense. What the squad are doing, what AOC is doing, what all of them, all of them, all of these progressives, if, if you, and you really don't need to look, uh, you know, uh, that far. You, you see that they're frauds. I mean, just look at Richie Torres and Jamal Bowman, who just got elected, right? You know immediately from the fact that they, well, Jamal Bowman opposes BDS, right? And then <laughs> says he supports Palestinian human rights, but also fully supports Israel. And then Richie Torres is just a straight up open Zionist. I mean, like, you know that they're full of it because progressives claim that their human rights, uh, that their politics are rooted in human rights. They're not. It, it, I mean, they can't be if you support apartheid genocidal regime like uh, the Zionist occupation, you can't be. It's just, it doesn't work. That's like the biggest, what, the biggest contradiction. And so you, you can tell from their foreign policy and you can tell from the fact that they don't, they don't actually put pressure on democratic leadership. And, and unfortunately, AOC used to, but now she doesn't anymore. Right? When she first got in, we saw something. We saw something. Right. Holding this protest outside uh, outside Pelosi's office. We saw something. There were a few ripples in the water and then it's gone. What a shame. So now she's practically endorsing the strategy that Jimmy Dore has been putting forward. She's endorsing the, the, the simplest of, of, of ideas that you come in and you leverage your vote for Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, against substantive policy. I mean, this is the, the, the bare minimum that you can do. The bare minimum. And, you know, you, you have... People laughing at Jimmy Dore, like, M uh, like Emma Viglin over here, you know, saying that, oh, you need magical powers to do this. Squad are not using magic to uh, make everybody bend to their will. No, no, no. This, this is not magic. Look, man. Math mathematics. Mathematics. Are not, you know, not my fort. Not my strong suit, but the squad, the progressives in Congress, 
had just enough, just enough leverage to pull the rug from under Pelosi's feet. Just enough numbers to do that. So, so this is nonsense. This is trolling. This is gaslighting. Do you see how, how they're not just making fun? They're, they're lying to you. They're trying to make it out to be like it's some kind of impossible feat, like it's climbing a mountain or something. No, it's not. It's really not. AOC herself, she just told you in that, in that video that I showed you right now. Okay? She said in this video, if you're a one-term congresswoman, so what? If you're a one-term congress member, so what? You can make... All right, she said that. I don't know why I can't hear the audio, but I think you heard it. Anyway. So what? Yeah, sure, you might have not gotten some committee assignments. You might have been chastised and, you know, sidelined in the party. You're not there to be friends with Pelosi. You're not there to make friends with people in D.C. You're there to, to get some crap done or take them down with you. Right? The, the, the idea, the notion is that you're supposed to have a hostile takeover and, and get results. She understands this. She said that she was saying this, um, these things before she got elected. She still says them sometimes to your face and then turns around and does the opposite. She's great. You know, she's very silver tongued. I'll give her that. What was really funny now is Ryan Grimm, who I just showed you before, was saying, oh, look, the left is splitting over such silly things. Look, look at him still trying to defend this nonsense. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> this is his, re his reply to today's developments, yes? He says, it's a tactic. Sometimes it's smart. Sometimes it's not. It depends on the circumstances. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of Donald Rumsfeld. There are no knowns and there are unknown knowns. There are things we know we know. <laughs> this is what a professional bullshitter sounds like. Yes, it's got that Donald Rumsfeld-esque air, uh, you know, air to it. If it's third down and you need one yard, running might be the smart call. If it's third and 30, running isn't the smart, the smart call. It is sadly not third and one for Medicare for All. Okay, I'm going to be very honest with you. I have no fucking clue what that means. Okay? To me, football is, is, is soccer, what you call soccer. I don't know what the fuck that means. No clue. What's funny, though, what I did appreciate... What I, what I did appreciate, even though I don't know what the fuck that, that means, is Justin Jackson, who is an NFL player, right, coming in and schooling Ryan Grimm, not, not just on the politics, but the football as well. So that was, I appreciated that very much. I appreciated this thread very much. He, <laughs> that was hilarious. So, you know, the, the backpedaling here is, is, well, it's not even really backpedaling. It's doubling down, isn't it? He, he's still trying to, you know, Ryan Grimm is still trying to pass this off as, oh, no, no, you, you don't understand. You're not seeing clearly, you know, they're playing 15 dimensional chess. Sometimes you got to move this way and sometimes you got to move this way. <laughs> oh, man, man. You got to love politicians and journalists, right? They're, they're, they're professionals in the art of bullshitting, truly. Truly. So apparently, according to Ryan Grimm, before it was a bad strategy, before it's splitting the left, before it's not OK. Now he's saying, oh, no, no, no. Now it's it's a tactic. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, and uh, it's just it just depends on the situation. Make your mind up. Get your story straight. Get your story straight, man. Stick stick to one thing. OK. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that. Uh, you had all these people saying, oh, it's performative. It, it's not just splitting the left. It's the unmasking, not splitting. But they're saying it's performative. What's the point? It goes to the Senate, it dies. The, the Senate is controlled by the GOP. You, you'll never get it past Mitch McConnell. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm dying to hear what excuses they're going to have in the next couple of years now that they have the House, the Senate, the White House. But, but regardless, their point was it's performative. Okay, well, what about this impeachment? Is that also not performative? We're, we're going to get to impeachment in a second. But you, you saw how they're rushing to impeach Donald Trump. They're like, oh my God, this is the first thing I do when I wake up is I think about impeaching Trump. That's all the progressives have been saying. That's all of them have been saying that, right? We have to impeach him. Donald Trump is, is literally going to nuke Washington, D.C. in five minutes. We have to impeach him. Orange Cheeto Man bad. Orange Cheeto Man has red Cheeto Man now. We have to get rid of him. Do you remember, <laughs> do you remember how they came up with this like psychological shit after when the war on terror started? They had like levels of the terror threat they still have it i think 
But you'd see it on TV all the time. It was like some some fucking mind control bullshit. Like the terror threat level has been raised to four and everyone. <laughs> bah, bah. It's, re it's really not a joke. Like that shit really has an effect on the general psycho um, you know, the psychological well-being of the population. It, it's really not not, you know, something to be taken lightly. And they, they were just doing it every single day in Britain, in the U in the U.S., you know, you, you turn on ITV or the BBC, the terror threat level has been raised to 15. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and we're, we're not, we're not going to, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But, you know, over here, they're trying to tell you Donald Trump is such a threat. He has to be impeached. Okay, well, how about Medicare for all? You know, healthcare. you have millions, you had millions of Americans uninsured and underinsured before the pandemic was even a thing. Yeah. Now it's even worse because tons of people have lost their jobs as a result of, of COVID. And in America, your healthcare is tied to your job because, you know, it's like some kind of feudalism bullshit. So, you know, <laughs> greatest country on earth, right? So, you know, ton tons more people now don't have healthcare. How is that not an emergency? How is the male suicide epidemic not an emergency? How is the opioid crisis not an emergency? How, how is that not an emergency? On its own, on its own, those things on their own are, are epidemics. By the medical definition, they're epidemics. And on top of that, you have millions of people who can't even, you, you know, I, I used to see people on Facebook saying they can't even uh, go to the doctor, get antibiotics. And then there are people commenting underneath, oh, you just go to a pet store. You can get uh, penicillin there. And I'm reading, I'm like, what the fuck? Penicillin for dogs? Like, what? this is America? What the fuck? I mean, <laughs> staggering, fucking staggering. <laughs> and then you have people like Ben Shapiro sit there and like stare into the camera and tell you we have the best hospitals in the world, which nobody can access because they're too broke to pay for them and no one has insurance. OK, well done. That's brilliant. Great, great job, Ben. You know, it, th this is barbaric. That that is a matter of urgency. What, what about, you know, people? For, forget Medicare for all. What, what about the fact that people have no money? Like, like they, they can't pay their rent. You know, they're being kicked out of their homes. That's, that's also not an emergency. Th those things are, are way more important than Trump. D Donald Trump was a threat for the last four years. You did nothing. None of you. You did nothing. You, you not just did nothing. You helped him. You helped Donald Trump. You are complicit. All of you. And you fucking know that. You profited off of Donald Trump. You made money off of Donald Trump. So this is all an act. This, this impeachment stuff. It's all an act to get away from actually giving you health care. And as, as Brianna points out over here, she said, this is a good answer from AFC, right? And it was as true for Medicare for All as it is for impeachment. 15 million people have lost their employer-based health care because of COVID. 87 million people are uninsured or underinsured. 68,000 preventable deaths per year. That's why we argue to hashtag force the vote. Exactly. I mean, th those figures are, are, are horrendous. They, they, they really are horrendous. And, you know, I, I, uh, I, hate, to, I hate to break it to you, man, but... Uh, they fucked you good. Oh, yeah. They fucked you good. Your progressive allies in Congress. <laughs> there are no friends in Washington, D.C. By the way, again, what I'm about to show you now that, uh, from, from AOC, if this, if this was all we had, okay, I, I'd, say, I'd say maybe you're reading into it a bit too much. Because I think everything that I just laid out is, is way more indicative. The fact that they voted for Pelosi, all of them, all of the progressives, Cori Bush, you know, Bar Barbara AOC, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley, Rashida Tlaib, Jamal Bowman, Cori Bush, all, all of them. I think I said Cori Bush twice. All of them. They all voted for her as Speaker of the House. Okay? None of them forced to vote. That's way more indicative of anything else. But look at what AOC tweets. This is January 6th. Okay? Hello, it's a new day. Who's ready to push? Uh, we, we were ready to force the vote, but Okay. So she says all these nice little things, and then she says healthcare. Hold on a second. What happened to Medicare for all? You know, so someone someone pointed out then that well, you know, maybe it's a character limit thing because 
you know, tweets. You can only put so much in a tweet. I think it's 140 characters. I don't remember what, what it is. And, and then someone said, well, well, you know, M4A, Medicare for All, it's just three <laughs> characters, which is way less than healthcare. So, you know, what, what is that? Is, is, this, is this like when we hear, we hear them talk about access to healthcare? Just like you have access to buying a, a yacht or a Ferrari or a $50 million mansion. Do you have $15 million? You'll need something along those lines to get proper health care in America. <laughs> you know, hold on, we're not done. This is an, an article from The Hill. Okay, this is an interview with, with, with AOC from January 4th. So that's two days before. And uh, this, she said something interesting here, right? She said something interesting. The, the, so I'm reading this to you from the Hill. The 30-year-old congresswoman went on to say she is thinking beyond a two-year time frame, saying if, we, is saying if I want to have a child, I would want my child or my nieces or nephews to have guaranteed health care by the time they're my age and freedom from want. I'm also very indecisive. Hold on a second. Your child by the time they're your age. Well, you, she's 30, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So if she has a baby tomorrow morning, <laughs> what is that? So, someone do the math for me. 2051? Oh, wow. That's, that's quite, a, quite a goal. Very admirable. Especially for a congressperson, right? To get policy uh, through, you know? It's just, it's just supposedly the, the greatest country in the world, the, the richest country in history, you know. Yeah, 30 years. I think that's reasonable. Maybe, maybe you can have Medicare for all in 30 years. I think that's reasonable. I think it's doable. Yeah. It's not like they could do it fucking tonight if they really wanted to, right? It's, it's not like they just shat a bunch of lies and, and you know, uh, evidence of weapons of mass destruction and invaded Iraq just like that or bomb another country just like that when they want to, right? It's not like they can just... Uh, give uh, tax cuts to the rich when they want to, just like that, right? It's the U.S. Congress, man. You got to wait. You got to be patient. Maybe by the time you have great grandchildren, they'll they'll finally have, uh, you know, access to partial Medicare for for some. <laughs> what what is that? What does that even mean? I, again, you know, you could come here and tell me, oh, you're reading too much into it. No, I don't think I am, because coupled, coupled with what we just saw, this this. Uh, abysmal display of of you know playing politics as we're led to believe where they all voted for pelosi who i mean jesus christ that woman is is the embodiment of corruption it's you know she's corruption on two legs <laughs> she, that that alone the fact that they refused to force the vote and then claimed you were being violent by asking her to to do what she was elected to do and and the fact that she's completely changed her discourse and rhetoric from when she was running I don't know, man. Doesn't sound very promising to me, right? I, th I think that's in the best case scenario. Yes, I'm trying to be diplomatic here. It doesn't look very promising. A more astute observer would say, these people are full of shit. Okay? I mean, it, I, I would be fucking banging on Pelosi's door 24 7 till that bitch gives me Medicare for all. I mean, it's, it's like, it's not, we're not stopping. Okay, we're, we're, we're gonna stay here until you give it to us. I'm not going anywhere. I, I, I mean, like, you, you were elected to do this, that you have literally nothing else to do. Nothing. Zero. That is your job. You have nothing else in the world to do. Bring your vuvuzelas, <laughs> bring, your, bring your guitars and amps. We are going to drive her nuts until she gives us that goddamn bill. We are going to ruin her and pull the speakership from under her. We're going to pull the rug from under her and, you know, pull the speakership. What, what is it? Her, her seventh, 17th goddamn term in Congress. She's been there for the last 30 years, enabling Bush, enabling Obama, you know, giving Trump everything he wanted, the corporations, just handing out blank checks, you know, pimping out the fucking Congress for Wall Street. I, you should be ruining her for what she has done to the American people. You, you should have pulled that speakership from underneath her in 2018. Oh, you didn't have the numbers? What about now? What about two weeks ago? You had the numbers. You didn't do anything. You ignored everyone who told you to do something about it. You said it was performative. 
man, you can't win, right? You can't win with them. It's just nothing works. You can't reason with them. You can't you know, ask them to fulfill their campaign prompts and nothing. It's a shame because once again, as I, as I go back uh, to what I said before, you know, AOC, she was doing the right thing in the beginning and now it's blowing in the wind. <laughs> what a shame. But just remember, just remember this. They know exactly how to play politics. They just don't want to. They just don't want to.